huge amounts of time over the past six months to finding the most effective options. To say the very least of it, the Green Party has never ever been a friend of bankers or builders. We are unique among all parties in this House in that we have never ever taken a red cent from either. The Green Party would never cooperate with an effort to bail out bankers or builders. Quite the opposite. We see this initiative for what it is, a stimulus for the Irish economy mired in crisis, an effort to get money flowing back to business, a move to save existing jobs and create new jobs. We need an effective and functioning banking system as part of a strategy to build economic recovery, to take advantage of the nascent and much hoped for international upswing. We need to ensure the flow of credit required to fund Irish businesses and sustain Irish jobs. Our banks must be able to get the money so they can lend it on to Irish businesses. That is why we have worked in government on the creation of the National Assets Management Agency. Throughout these months of government deliberations, we in the Green Party have stressed that the solution we choose must be the least expensive and the least unfair option for the Irish taxpayer. I would not be standing here before you if I did not believe that we are on our way to finding the least expensive and least unfair option. For me, the National Assets Management Agency is the least worst option. But we have worked hard to refine and adapt it to bring real spin-off benefits to Irish taxpayers and ensure that there can be no repeat, and I mean no repeat, of the property bubble which led us inexorably to this economic crisis. But let's keep the focus on the one thing we need to do right now. We have to get out of this crisis. So I ask, what alternatives do we have? Well, we've been offered the good bank option from Fine Gael, and we've been offered bank nationalisation from Labour to be followed by another version of NAMA, which they call ART, the Asset Recovery Trust. Despite both parties' efforts to delude the public, each of these would-be alternatives is both expensive and unfair. And more importantly, I simply do not believe they would be as effective as the National Asset Management Agency in resolving our current dire difficulties. Labour and some of their supporting commentators would have us believe that 100% bank nationalisation would be the way to go. We look, we look very closely at the prospect without any ideological baggage. The simple reality is that full bank nationalisation would leave Irish taxpayers responsible immediately for 100% of capital and funding costs for the banks. It would instantly cost tens of billions of euro money we simply don't have. For example, in the case of Anglo-Irish Bank, which had to be nationalised earlier this year, we found that we had to inject €4 billion Euro in taxpayers' money to make good serious loan losses. There is no other option when a bank is nationalised because banks must keep minimum capitalisation levels. The reality is that Ireland borrows most of its money abroad. If banks were fully nationalised, Ireland's credit rating would be downgraded and borrowing would be a heck of a lot more expensive for the Irish taxpayer. Central to Fine Gael's original plans for a good bank was an apparent threat to default on significant levels of bank debt. This would have been very far-reaching uh, and I think it would have had disastrous effects causing long-term damage to Ireland's reputation and ultimately costing far more taxpayers' money to fix. The bonds issued by banks are for the most part part of the bank's own funding. They are owned by pension funds, insurance companies and other providers of long-term funds. But let's not waste too much time here. It's enough to say that two former Fine Gael leaders, Gareth Fitzgerald and Alan Jukes, felt obliged to publicly express serious misgivings about the solution being advanced by the party to which they had given a large part of their lives and considerable talents. All of us here in this chamber who have devoted time and efforts to our own parties know the personal dilemma involved for these two men and I salute uh, their integrity and honesty. And can I say, uh, Deputy Kenny, over the weekend I had the opportunity uh, to meet another former Fine Gael TD at a social event, uh, Fine Gael Stallworth, who wished me well and said, do your very best, do your very best uh, for the country. I won't say, I won't say because I have a lot of respect for the, uh, the, the individual. And he did, say, he did say something interesting. He said, if Fine Gael and the Labour Party were to get a coalition together in a few weeks' time, and if they were to enter government, what would they do? They would introduce NAMA. They would introduce NAMA. I share the anger of people who look on bankers' greed and stupidity and ask reasonably, well, why not just let the banks fall? 
Why not let them face the same consequences I and every other citizen faces if I mess up on my own finances? Right up to very recent times, we've had to listen to lectures from incompetent and immoral bankers telling ordinary workers they had no right to modest pay rises and that they knew best about everything. It is more, I think, it's very tempting to borrow from those bankers' own rhetoric and let the almighty market take its course, letting the chips fall where they will. The sad reality is that allowing this to happen would hurt the ordinary citizen far too much. Life savings would be lost, businesses would be crippled, our international reputation would be damaged irreparably, unemployment would spiral. The reality is that we must fix the banking system. But in so doing, we must also reform it. We must install a new regulatory regime and we must rebuild trust. <coughs> I've always stated that the Green Party's key objectives is also to protect the taxpayer. The objective was central to our approach to finding a solution to this crisis and in the ongoing work of elaborating the details of NAMA's working and the accompanying measures. In summary, under the NAMA proposal, the taxpayer is protected from risk in three ways. Through ownership of stakes in the banks, through holding back a portion of the premium being paid over uh, current market values, through a levy which can be imposed on the banks if NAMA winds up with a deficit. We already own 25% of Bank of Ireland and AIB and will end up through NAMA owning larger stakes in the banks. Thus, the taxpayer will share in any upside that might arise. But we have avoided the disadvantages of total nationalisation, which I've already cited. We are paying 15% over market value for the loans to reflect the fact that there is no real current market value for property or indeed property loans. This premium reflects what valuations can reasonably be expected to recover to over the medium term. This premium amounts to 7 billion euro. We are sharing the risk on this premium with the banks. Of the 7 billion euro, the banks will only receive 4 billion up front and the balance of 3 billion only at the end and only if NAMA makes a profit. If on the winding up of NAMA there is a deficit, the government may impose a levy on the covered banks to recoup these losses. So even in these extreme circumstances, the taxpayers' interests are covered. Count Corla, the Green Party did not cause the economic problems we are now encountering, but we have the policies and solutions to fix them, which we have insisted upon being introduced in, the, in tandem with NAMA. We have a proud record, I think, of standing up to vested interests when others turned a blind eye. We did not take money, we did not take money from banks or developers. When other parties were shouting for tax cuts and stamp duty amnesties, we were warning of unfettered greed in the banking system of builder-led development, of putting profit before people. Our banking and property problems cannot be fixed unless we address our planning problems. In this country, greed ruled over need when it came to planning. The profits of developers and landowners were placed by councils the length and breadth of the country above the needs of ordinary citizens. It is no coincidence that our commuter towns are now suffering the most from the economic downturn. These are towns where house upon house was built and field upon field rezoned, but hardly any facilities were built. These are towns where unemployment rates have increased most quickly and house prices have collapsed by the largest amount. These are the towns where the citizens have paid an enormous price for the councillors who rezoned at the behest of greedy developers and landowners. We've heard much from the opposition who have used every opportunity to claim that NAMA is a bailout. It is not. If I, for one <coughs> minute, actually thought that it was a bailout uh, for any developer, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Different work. My party can stand proudly on its record on our dealings with developers and bankers and the policy decisions we have been involved in. Five years ago, nearly to the day, uh, Deputy Kenny, uh, Labour and uh, Fine Gael launched their much vaunted uh, Mullingar Accord. Mullingar, uh, I think, was chosen for the signing because of the power sharing agreement between the two parties reached on Westmeath County Council. So, so did that agreement bring with it a new type of politics in Westmeath? Did people come before profits of banks and land speculators? Not a bit of it. That power sharing agreement brought with it some of the most irresponsible planning this country has ever seen. That agreement saw enough land zoned in Athlone 
to do it for 60 years of boom building, to 2069 to be precise. So I ask you, did the Mullingar Accord bring a fair deal to the people of Westmead? Are the families who moved there paying huge prices for their new homes? The scale of the problem is now becoming apparent. Tell us about the 50%. Athlone is the tip of an overzoning iceberg, which has contributed massively to the housing and development bubble. Figures collated by my department show that in 45 towns and cities designated as develop, uh, developing areas, there is enough land zoned now for houses for an additional 1.7 million people. Yes, I am. That is a staggering amount of overzoning. Putting it another way, it would mean the that at the site. rate of boom house building, this land would not be used up until 2032. When you look at individual towns, it actually gets worse. In many towns and cities, councillors have zoned so much land that they will be long dead themselves before it is used up. Waterford has enough zoned land to last until 2072 at boom time building rates. In Dundalk, the house uh, building party would continue till 2073. In Cork, Deputy Lynch, you'd be interested to know, the year is uh, 2053. In Tralee, the zoned land stockpile will last until 2043. The Green Party so will exactly. clean up this mess this type of reckless rezoning behaviour has brought with it. The Green Party will break that cosy councillor stroke developer cartel once and for all. Gwyn. Through the most radical planning legislation ever, we will rid our council chambers of the wink and elbow language of developers Gwyn. and their puppet councillors. Councillors, this. councillors will retain this. their zoning powers, but they will have to be used responsibly. They will have to abide by national and regional guidelines and will no longer be able to engage in zoning free-for-alls. The planning context for the post-NAMA period will be set by this legislation and it is aimed at achieving much more focused land use strategies with the provision of land zoned for residential and other development closely tied to national and regional policies and grounded in an evidence base uh, of population projections and other needs. A robust planning structure can ensure that some of the mistakes of the past are not repeated, in that it should no longer be possible to provide vast tracts of zoned land without reference to population demand and provision of essential services. More focused land use strategies will also result in more efficient use of taxpayers' money by allowing the state to target investment in essential infrastructure and services more uh, accurately. And when our new planning uh, legislation is enacted, each local authority will have to review their development plans and in many areas deal with irresponsible rezonings of the past. The introduction of NAMA is also an opportunity to ensure that a so-called social dividend becomes an integral part of future planning and development. This has uh, long, I think, been uh, shamefully neglected. The Green Party will ensure that our communities get the services they need and deserve. It is, an it is essential that there is a social dividend to NAMA and there is a first refusal mechanism on NAMA assets for social projects from schools to hospitals and community facilities. This morning, Mr. Tom Parlin of the Construction Industry Federation was on uh, Morning Ireland complaining about this, claiming NAMA would be, and I quote, hogtied by such a provision. I disagree profoundly and fundamentally with him and his members, and I have one message for Mr. Parlin and his people. Please keep your nose out of NAMA. It is for the government and the members of this House, of all parties, to decide on how NAMA and related planning reforms will work. Profit without social dividend is what actually created this property bubble. Developers actually lived high on the hog from charging astronomical prices for sites for schools and other social infrastructure, from building serried ranks of houses without regard to the needs of those they sold them to. We will also ensure a windfall tax on the future rezoning of land. In our deliberations over NAMA, we in the Green Party argued that a windfall tax on property developers would have an essential and indispensable component. Uh, it would be a, a, an indispensable part of the package. It is the least the public deserve for footing the considerable NAMA bills. People have suffered too much from the culture of speculation which has infected our property and building sectors. The remedy for this suffering from inflated prices and deficient facilities has been posited for over four decades, but actually blithely ignored. 
uh, now at last a key recommendation of the Kenny report can be put in place. Uh, and I did listen to what uh, uh, Deputy Gilmore ha has said about 1999 and your uh, own submission in relation to the Kenny report. I would simply say to you, uh, Deputy, your party has been in government since the Kenny report has been published. Uh, and and uh, you did nothing about Not it. We're years. in government and we're actually going to do something about it. Our legislation will reform the planning system to make sure it works better and more efficiently, not in the interests of the few, but in the wider interests of society and a sustainable economy. I will extend planning permissions for renewable energy projects. I will speed up the planning appeals system through reducing the quorum on board Panola from three to two for smaller cases. I will overhaul the foreshore licensing system to modernize it for the renewable energy re revolution that is beginning here in Ireland. Our development plans will have to have a climate change agenda from sustainable transport to adaptation at their core. Those who willfully flout our planning laws will no longer get away with it under my plans. I will reform the retention system and impose punitive penalties and restrictions on its use. The only leaf before Christmas, and I hope you support no it, minister, the only leaf the Green Party is interested no in is a new one. Years the government has used we want to see this country turning often. over a new leaf where you can no longer get your land rezoned because you are pals with a councillor. We want a new leaf where good ideas responsible business and public goods are actually rewarded. This week, the climate change left. expert Professor John no Sweeney left. called for a range of policies to prevent a property bubble recurring and to ensure a sustainable future and economy for all of us. That is exactly what we plan to deliver. Karen Corla, so much of the talk yesterday centred on the risks and costs for the taxpayer. And yes, there are risks and costs associated with every one of the options mooted to get us out of our current crisis. But let's be clear, the risks and costs associated with NAMA arise if it does not make a profit. Another risk is that it does work and promotes another property bubble. In formulating our policy, we've looked at all of those costs, all of those risks, and sought at all times to minimize and eliminate any risk to the taxpayer. The almost 250,000% increase in house prices between 1996 and 2006 was completely unsustainable and should not ever be repeated. But is it really beyond the bounds of possibility that we could not have a 10% increase in property uh, over the next 10-year period, particularly when we get credit flowing again in the economy and given that inflation alone could be running at 2% annually? That has to be a distinct possibility. We have seen property prices drop to much more sustainable levels, and rightly so. The measures we will introduce in relation to good planning and rezoning will ensure that we will never return to those days of hyperinflated property prices again. There is a real circularity to the argument in relation to NAMA. NAMA will work if we get credit flowing in the economy. If we get credit flowing in the economy, NAMA will work. Count Corla, I have to say, I've never owned a share in any bank or company in my life. I simply don't believe in it. I also believe, as a Green Party member for over a quarter of a century, that regardless of the solution being put forward, whether it be NAMA, the Magic Bank, nationalisation, default or whatever, the aim is to resurrect a system which is in and of itself unsustainable. We in the Green Party know this, but we also know that we are hooked into this unsustainable system and that the transition out of it, which is absolutely necessary, will take a while yet. In the meantime, the livelihoods of so many people are dependent on that functioning of this flawed system. That is why it is necessary in the short to medium term to make changes in order that the financial and economic system are more ecologically sustainable than previously. As a result of those changes, that culture of greed and stupidity will be changed. It will be a better regulated system which will result in more benefits for ordinary people and a better quality of life for all. That is why I will be pushing for further amendments to the NAMA legislation. NAMA is undoubtedly the biggest decision that this doll has ever taken, but it is also a turning point in Irish politics. The circumstances that have given rise to this crisis will never ever be repeated. I am aware of the great responsibility that rests on the Green Party's shoulders, and I can say to the House that after this crisis will emerge the greatest opportunity we have yet uh, to transform this country. The new planning legislation and the new programme for government will be transformational in nature. And indeed, it will only be accepted by the Green Party membership if it is so.
Thank you. Yes. Uh, 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 uh,